My name is Lewis with Rossman Repair Group, and today I'd like to take an aside from discussing the issues in the repair and the part supply industry to discuss uh, my dad and discuss my appreciation for what he did for me as a kid. Some of the things that I didn't even really notice uh, until recently. And this was inspired by a Yelp tip I got from uh, someone a few months back who was really dissatisfied with an iPhone repair. So he comes in to get an iPhone fixed. It's actually for his kid. And I give him the price for the four, which is about five, five, ten bucks lower than the average in the area and about five dollars higher than people who were doing it out of their apartment. And he, and you know, he, he doesn't go, nah, no thanks, sir. He goes, you know, that, that contorted face with all the wows in it, which is, you know, the, you know their uh, passive aggressive way of saying, fuck you for charging money for service. So this ain't off to a, this ain't off to a good start already. Now, I think the kid actually, he seems really enthusiastic to get this done. So instead of just letting him leave and fuck off, I decide to you know, offer, him, offer him an alternative. So, you know, he doesn't have glass falling out his ear. And I say, well, if you don't want to pay for this screen, uh, we have a knockoff grade B screen available. It's not as good. It doesn't look as good. I don't guarantee quality on it, but we'll get the job done and it will uh, cost you less money. Now, people who know me know that uh, I'm not a salesman. I've never been a good salesman. I don't use silly marketing term or funny, funny lingo and fine print uh, to get you to think that I'm selling you a filet mignon when I'm selling you a street hot dog. I don't sell certified pre-owned screens. I sell good fucking screens and bad fucking screens. And I use very simple, clear, and concise English to let you know if you're buying from the good pile or the bad pile. So my explanation of the knockoff screen is most certainly not to fault here with uh, the, the ensuing clusterfuck. And I offered it at a price point where it's at least 15, 20 bucks lower than the guy who does it out of his apartment. Or uh, the guy who does it on Craigslist. And, you know, and he, he jumped at it. And at this point, something happens that really starts to pull at my heartstrings. The little kid looks up at his dad and he pulls his sleeve. He's like, but dad, can I get the original screen for my birthday? And then it hits me. Holy fuck. This kid's getting this for his birthday. He's getting this for his birthday. Um, and you're, getting, and, and you're arguing in, in front of them about price, and then you agree, after I explain to you that this part is going gonna, is gonna to be crappy, that you agree to get it for your, for your kid's birthday, a once a year experience. Wow. So, anyway, I, I get it, and you know, I've got about three or four other things I'm doing, so an hour and a half or so later, he comes back, he picks it up, and he looks at it, and he's like, you know, he's, decent, he's satisfied with it. He's, he gets to his white screen, and he sees a slight mark on it. And this screen does have an imperfection where it looks great on everything except on a white background and this you see a mark where it's not white. Hey, you know, I try to politely explain him that this is a knockoff screen. He argues and argues and argues, you know, of course he argues. Dare he actually listen to what I said when I was selling him this cheaper product. Now, what I said is very far off from uh, what he writes that I said. And if the kid's watching, don't use your dad's example for listening comprehension. It's, it's very wrong. What I said was, sir, I'm not trying to make up some bullshit story to avoid giving you good service, but I did explain to you everything that was, that was going to be wrong with this screen, and, and you agreed to it. So, yeah, here you go. And he goes off to complain about my use of the word bullshit. I mean, I, I, you could see from this video blog, from the, from the written blog, from my own website, from my posts on public forums, that I am about helping people, providing good service at good prices, showing people how to do what I do, showing people how to start their own business, and uncovering the lies and garbage in my industry. What I am not about is uh, G-rated language. Uh, G there is very, very little G-rated language here. That's not what I built a reputation for, so I, I didn't really apologize for it. But moving on to the point, uh, I eventually give him another 10 bucks off just to get him to get the fuck out of here. Personally, I think that the nice dad would have agreed to the, you know, the original screen in the first place. Uh, and also, he does spend some time on and off his cell phone during this process. And you know, call me a douchebag for eavesdropping, but from the, the subject of these phone calls, the difference in price between knockoff screen and original, not a concern to this guy. Uh, just it's, it wasn't in the same way it was uh, to my parents. Call, but now I don't want. This video to be about you know me complaining uh, about some dipshit customer. I want the point of this video to be about be about parenting. Sounds silly since I'm not a parent myself, but the moral of this is 
your birthday and Christmas are very special times of the year, and you need to make it feel special for your kid. And the, you don't make it feel special for your kid when you're bargaining over the price of putting a knockoff crappy part in his phone for the one time of the year that you want him to feel special. That doesn't make somebody feel special. That doesn't make the kid feel like this is his, uh, you know, once a year birthday uh, surprise. That, that, make, that probably makes the kid feel like shit. And it's just not a nice thing to do. It's just not something you should do if you're a parent. Now, I sympathize with, with the idea that somebody may not be able to spend on it because my dad, while being an awesome dad, was not always the most financially stable. He did a lot of things for me that I really appreciate. You know, he wasn't the kind of dad that just beat the shit out of you or punished you or yelled at you to, to try to grow you into a real human being. He would point out the real world consequences for how I was acting as a child and show me how if I continued acting this way, this is what would happen to you in the real world. These are the bad, th these are the good things that you wouldn't get. And this is why you should stop being such an annoying piece of shit. You know, my, my dad tried to, to instill in me some, some values so that I would have real world motivation uh, to do the right thing. Instead of, uh, you know, instead of me being a piece of shit when I was 18 or 19 because my dad wasn't there to spank me anymore or send me to my room, he tried to, you know, give, give me some real values. And I appreciate that. And he spent time with me and uh, he helped me with my homework and, you know, we played, uh, you know, we played football outside. All the, all the things that you get out of a good father-son relationship. But one of the things that I didn't always get were the <clears throat> items and the toys that the other kids got. And my, the reason is because my dad did not always make the most money. He had a lot of bad luck with his knees, his shoulders, his back, then his shoulders again, then his knees again, then his other knee, and then his other shoulder. And he was a chef, so you know his job was standing up for 16, 17 hours a day and doing this in a cutting board. You just can't do that if your joints don't work. So he didn't always have the money to get me the, the presents that the kid with the million dollar house on the end of the block had. And I understood this. So you know, when, when my birthday came, the other kid with the, you know, he may have this uh, the cable, cable TV, a 50-inch widescreen, and and a PlayStation 2. Well, I have my you know the black and white Game Boy that I got for my fifth birthday, and I was okay with that, because uh, come the holiday time, even if my dad didn't have the money to get me what I wanted, he had the he put the time and the effort in to make me feel special. Like I like test trucks. Let's say maybe he can't afford uh, to to spend 150 bucks on you know a, a fake little truck that year. Maybe I got a used one. Maybe he put it in some nice saran wrap and cleaned off that used one and put it into a nice box that it looked like he bought it from the Hess store. Even though he, he was buying me maybe the knockoff great thing, <clears throat> he was putting the effort in to make me feel like I was getting the original. And you know, he, he wasn't going to, to, to bring me to the store with him while he was buying this, to have the guy explain to him how this is a piece of shit, and then give it to me and go, here son, here's your piece of shit. What kind of fucking parent does that? Now. I'm not saying that kids should always get what they want. I'm not saying that every single time your kid asks for something that you're not making him feel special because you didn't get it from him. You know, you got him a 16 megabyte uh, memory card instead of a 32 megabyte one for his PSP, so you're not a good parent. I'm not saying that at all. I understand that all parents have financial hardships. And I think that if you explain to your kid, well, my weekly salary is this much, my rent is this much, and you're asking me for a toy that costs this much. So we can do, either, we can do one of two things. We can continue living indoors, or you can have a PlayStation 3. I think if you explain it to them that way, they will appreciate why you didn't get them a PlayStation 3. And I think they'll understand it. <clears throat> they may not be happy that they have a 10-year-old Game Boy instead of a PlayStation 3, but they'll understand it. And, and they won't hate you for it if you, if you take the time to explain it. And they may even learn the values for when they grow up and, you know, how to spend money properly, you know, pay my rent, uh, PlayStation. You know, they may, they, they'll, they'll learn how to make the right choices. I'm not saying that you should spend money on your kids like crazy. What I am saying is that it is important to take some time out and take some thought out to make your kid feel special. Because sometimes it is okay to lie to your kid. You know, if uh, your kid makes a drawing of you and it's a little off, because that's what two-year and three-year-old kids do. They don't draw, you know, they, they don't draw you perfectly. They'll, they'll make a little stick figure. Do you say, thank you for making this drawing and put it on the fridge? Or do you say, my shoulders aren't that wide? and crumble it up and throw it at his face. It's sometimes you lie to make your kid feel good, and sometimes if it's, a, if, if it's Christmas or his birthday, that's just part of what you do. So I'd like to thank my dad because for all the times that he didn't have the money to get me the Nike shocks or the North Face jacket, and that he did something to make me feel special, even if he couldn't afford to make me feel special. I, I want to say thank you for that. Thanks for not being a piece of shit. I really appreciate it.